So time is going really fast. It's just a couple of months now till the end of our production season. So much to do, so little time, and we've just finished the farm scale permaculture design course, and we have a new group of interns who are off camping in the nature reserve about an hour and a half away, and we're just catching up with things on the farm. So a little update with things that are going on at the moment. I can fun fill with the turkeys. Turkeys are hiding around the back. Beautiful. So we had a really great uh, design course and lots of engaged people from various places around the world, as is typical of our trainings here. Really nice groups, and Chef Elon, who has been here on the first year that the farm set up, came back as the chef for the training and delivered amazing food as always, including a lovely feast of canapes and lots more delicious things to send off the team as they go out and do good stuff in the world. Chef Elon! Bacon. Can we Look at this. Please. What have you got, James? Wasabi chips. Sorry, kale chips with wasabi mayo, kohlrabi, and apple. Mmm, <laughs> yummo. So, what are you making? I've made Yorkshire pudding puddings. Yorkshire pudding pudding! I'm a Yorkshire man! What's so in them? Yorkshire pudding, then it's going to be caramel, then whipped cream, then homemade strawberry jam, <laughs> then chocolate, then a strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try? Uh, jam is gone. No. <laughs> yes, Ruben? So many bumblebees. Good, good. So these two ladies were spared from slaughter. They are weighing about five and a half and 5.8 kilos. And they've become barnyard chickens. Now they're very big. But also very robust. They've got strong feet, foraging on their own. We've done this mainly out of interest for people to see. We kept some for a year before with the laying flock and they grew to over eight kilos. But still they were sleeping on roosts. They were laying goose-sized double double yokers every second day. They're not exactly good egg layers, but they learned to be chickens. Hello. And it goes to show, management is key. These are healthy, happy birds. And by restricting the timing of their feeding, their movement is greater, their foraging is greater, their leg development is fine, and they're adequate and robust, healthy birds. Morning moves. Hello, girls. And boy. Come on. The sheer mass of these aronia. We've been growing these up for seed, and aronia is not so good to eat raw, uh, but it makes wonderful jams that can be sold, and they're quite popular here. And we've been selling them fresh on the Rico, but I'm thinking to replace all of the hazel that's died from droughts or voles up in the fields with aronia, because it's such an abundant crop here. It's very hardcore 
plant it doesn't need any care or attention and just masses of fruit so I'm thinking of stratifying and planting a lot of seed of this again Oh, cloth balls. Now mushrooms are hydraulic, so they can pop through. This is an old tarmac word, but you see mushrooms can break through that in the first part of succession, the physical succession, with weathering and things like fungi and bacteria before we even get to plant succession. But these porcinis have busted through the road, they're too old to eat now. You can see they've been cracking up this road through the forest. But there's just an incredible amount of mushrooms when you really start looking down at the ground. We're out looking for chanterelles and porcini that aren't too old, but there are so many mushrooms in Sweden at this time. It's just your eyes become accustomed to finding them. And there's a huge amount of fly garricks and so many species that I don't actually know what they are. So here's the brown chanterelle. We have to look real close because it's actually lots of it. And it's a mycorrhizal mushroom, so whenever you find some, you find a bunch more. But there's just so many fungi everywhere, but most of them are not the edible ones that we're after. Look at all them spores. So, there's four primary types of mushrooms. These are saprophytes, so they're eating dead organic material. So this is the type of mushroom that can turn anything that once lived back into life but that's the edible mushrooms we typically grow such as oysters and shiitake what we are interested in with the edibles like the this is porcini Carl Yuan in Swedish or the brown chanterelle we are looking for mycorrhizal fungi so they are numerous all around the forest floor but they are growing in association with a tree so they are exchanging minerals for sugars from the photosynthesis of the tree. Now we're a little late for hunting, so we're not finding so many as we'd like. But yeah, the mycorrhizal fungi that we come and hunt, typically all the ones you hunt in the wild are mycorrhizal, like truffles or porcinis, etc. Okay, the great sausage party. So we have a stack of turkeys, pork, laying hens, and some lamb as well. And we're gonna make a lot of sausages of all different kinds of recipes. Lots of boning and processing of meat to do in the next few days. So we'll be following this process along as we go. So we have probably three or 400 kilos of sausage to make now in the next days. We have turkey and we've got some laying hens. We've got uh, sheep, mutton, lamb, and we have pork and pork fat that we are going to put into different mixes, different recipes, and I hope to document some of that for you. There's a lot of work to prep all that, lots of boning and lots of just grinding and getting everything down. It's a lot of work to make sausages, but it's a really nice process to do with the interns when they come back from camping now and to make our food supply for the next weeks. And we'll be trying out lots of different recipes and I'll try and document them as we go next week. So looking forward to the training now. We jump into holistic management training with Anders, who's coming to visit from Norway as a savory hub trainer. And then we jump into our program until the end of the season now. So. I'll be putting out videos as much as I can. It'll be busy but inspiring times here at the farm and I look forward to giving you updates soon. You can find out a whole bunch more in the links below in our online training, which is a very condensed overview of how to do all these things and the numbers and the processes to make them work on the ground. You can find out all that in the links below. See you in the video soon.